Yeah, and so we'll kind of go section by section here through the settings list and highlight some of the things that uh, you will want to touch on as you roll out this application. Um, so all these different settings basically live under the settings tab here over on the left. So first we'll jump into profile. Um, this is basically set up unique for each user. Um, this is going to cover things like, you know, making sure you've got the right email on file. You know, you can sign a job title and a company. Um, one thing that is nice about the profile is you can actually draw or upload your signature or a stamp. Um, so Zoho Sign is going to give you some pre-baked options if you want to just use one of their signatures, but you can actually upload your own and use that digitally on all of your documents. So kind of a nice way to just personalize it and make sure that, um, you know, your signature is as close as possible to your real one. Um, Moving down the list here into notification settings. Um, this is kind of going to cover all the different types of notifications that you want to receive internally. Um, so that's kind of an important piece here that these are really thinking about internal notifications. Um, so these are things like, do we want to be notified when a document is signed or approved or recalled? Right. We'll notice some of these we don't have turned on, like we don't want a notification just because someone viewed something, but you can actually do that if you want to, you know, maybe follow up with it later. Um, over on the right hand side are some admin level notifications in case you wanted to know anytime a user is added or removed. Um, that could be useful if you do have uh, anyone kind of delegated that is able to do those operations, but you still want to uh, be privy to any changes. Moving down the list here, we'll jump to the user management. Um, so within here, you can go ahead and add a user up in the top left. Um, and then once everyone's been added, they basically roll into a big list where you can see, you know, which email they're added under, what role they're in. Um, and then if their account is active, you'll basically see, you know, invited, granted, disabled, right, to track the status of people. I will highlight if you are using Zoho One, you can also do this from your Zoho One panel, right? So you don't need to do this here if you're a Zoho One user, but if you have this as a standalone application, this is going to be where you do that. Uh, now we're getting into some of the more dense settings. So uh, within account settings, there's kind of a handful of different sections. Um, first off with our sending options, this kind of covers everything for um, kind of client facing, right? As you're sending out these documents. So like Brett was talking about earlier, you know, there, there is kind of an expiration of documents. Um, it's gonna default that to 15 days, but maybe you wanna make it more, you know, you could bump that up to 60 or 90, right? And give people however much time you want them to have. Um, one really useful feature here is that you can set up automated reminders. Um, and so in this case, right, we have the box checked and then we're just sending a reminder every five days, right? Basically with a, hey, you've got an active document, click here to sign. Um, recipient authentication, our next little section is something that you may wanna activate. And, and basically what that is, is it's gonna enforce that they have some type of authentication, um, like a secondary authentication to actually be able to sign a document. Um, and then the use case of that is, you know, if I were to send a document for signature over to Brett, he could, in theory, just forward that email to someone else and they could sign it. Um, right. And so this is kind of a way to say, you know what, once they actually go to click it, we're going to send one more authentication to that user um, via either SMS or email to validate that they're the person signing. Now, no system is perfect. People could still game that and not um, actually sign it themselves, but it's a good best practice if you want to be extra secure. Um, and then last but not least, down at the very bottom, you can actually set a standard email that you want to send out from. Um, so you can use basically like a zohosign.com email, or you could authenticate your own or an organization email like, you know, contracts at Sonata and use that as your uh, default sender. Um, kind of the next little section here is around the recipient experience. So this is kind of like what's going to happen when you're actually looking at a document as the client. Um, so we can actually say if we want to restrict certain modes of signature, right, we could say, hey, you know what, you're not allowed to just type it in, you have to either draw it or upload an image of your real signature. Um, in terms of like the validity of those, they're all really treated the same. Either way, it's going to be a binding document, but you might want to, you know, restrict those if your business requires it. Um, 
kind of down the line, we can assign certain actions that they can or cannot do, right? So we can say, hey, you're not allowed to assign this signature to anyone else. You're not allowed to skip anything. Um, you know, you're not allowed to download or email out this document. Um, generally speaking, you're going to want to allow people to do most of these things. Um, if someone's going to sign a contract, I think it's fair that they get to download it. You'd only really want to turn that off if there was something proprietary in it that they weren't allowed to really walk away with. Um, again, screenshots are still a thing, so it's not going to be perfect, but you could turn that off. Um, if we move down the page a little bit, um, we'll see there are some additional fields kind of at the bottom. Um, so we have, you know, the signer hint box. I would recommend leaving that on. Um, that basically is just going to allow the user to fly through the list, right? So every time they enter a field, it pops up a hint on the next one and will actually move their page to what they need to fill in next. Um, that one just makes it way easier to get through one of these documents. Um, and then lastly here, uh, we can choose who should be able to basically view any attachments uploaded. So you can actually have someone upload an attachment as part of the signature. And there you're kind of just saying who gets permissions on that. And moving kind of into our, go ahead, Brett. I was going to say, and the allow custom redirection to landing pages is a big one too. So you can actually read after they're done, you can kind of redirect them to a URL instead of the default page after they've completed the action. So just yeah. one more thing and to look at there. A good one that we see people do there is redirect to a uh, like FAQ page, right? You know, like or a new customer page, right? Because that's kind of where they're at in the process now. Um, we'll talk about the next one super quick. Uh, they actually have enabled blockchain or blockchain stamping. If you do want to do that for your business, obviously kind of a new thing. Um, definitely a shiny object that they've added here. Probably not a ton of use for it quite yet, but in line with you know DocuSign, Adobe Sign, they're all kind of starting to adopt this technology, which just is one more level of verification that Zoho isn't hosting themselves um, to validate that something was signed. Um, so never hurts, you know, obviously we don't expect Zoho to really be going anywhere, but in a hypothetical world where, you know, Zoho sign doesn't exist anymore, this would give you a way to still verify that a document was signed. Um, moving down the list, this one becomes pretty important if you're going to use any custom emails to send out. Um, so in this case, we have our demo domain here. This is kind of your standard domain authentication. You're going to drop a DKIM and an SPF record into your domain. Just going to help you not get into people's spam list if you are going to send as yourself through Zoho Sign. Um, definitely something we would advise doing. It's important to note here, you have a lot of authentication going on. They're trying in Zoho One, they're trying to kind of pull it all together, but it's really not. Um, so you will need to do this for CRM, for Sign, for Zoho One, for campaigns. Um, you want to verify, you want to see if the DKIM is the same. If it is, then you're okay. If it's not, then it's different. And the SPF, so there's, unfortunately, you kind of have to go through this several times. And then last, but definitely not least, you can actually activate um, automatic cloud backups. Um, which is really, really nice. So you can actually uh, choose from a variety of different cloud storages, anything from WorkDrive, OneDrive, you know, Google Drive, all the, all the big players are supported. Um, and basically what this is gonna do is just automatically pull all of your completed documents into another folder, right? That you designate in one of those services. Um, just kind of another level of redundancy to make sure that um, you've got your contracts on hand for whenever you may need them. Um, kind of our next little set of settings is a quick one. It's just our organization details. So here you can come in, drop in your company name, drop in your street and city and all the kind of default values. Um, you can also load your logo in here, which allows you to then, you know, kind of dynamically bring that into any of your email templates that are going out. Um, so kind of an important one to do, but one that won't take you very long to set up. Um, lastly, or not lastly, but next here, we can look quickly at the subscription details. Um, you know, not something you're going to need to mess with a lot, but you can see, you know, what plan you're on, when you're going to be paying, how many users you've got. If you wanted to, you know, change who the owner of the system was, you can come in and do that here and you can make any modifications as well. Um, the second half here is really something for, you know, developers to be aware of. Um, so. This is kind of where you're going to be keeping an eye on your API and SMS credits. I do want to highlight, you know, we're not going to dive into it here. And when when Brett walks through his um, 
his setup later for the CRM, it's important to know that that process does not consume any credits. So, um, you know, just keep that in mind as you, as you view that. But if you are creating signed documents through Zoho Flow or through a third-party integration or even through Deluge or Zoho's kind of scripting language, those are going to consume API credits. Um, and so this is where you'll go to buy and manage those. Um, they have to be purchased in one-time increments, but they will notify you anytime that you're getting low. Um, so just something to be aware of if you are going to kind of go down the path of automating a lot of this is that there is kind of an ongoing cost with these credits, um, but you've got the tools to manage them here. And the API credits sell for 50 cents a piece. If you're buying large, large, large amounts, you actually can go negotiate. You'll have to do it directly with Zoho to kind of lower them as well. Um, and hopefully it changes soon, but if you actually click on the buy API credits button and you purchase the API credits, when it's done, it says your SMS credits are con <laughs> confirmed, but it'll actually put them into your API credits. So, so don't, uh, don't panic there, but it is actually anything around automation. Um, you are going to consume these not really a lot. And although their price at 50 cents might seem high, it is much, uh, much cheaper than most of the other uh, Zoho sign or the other sign applications that are out there today. Yep. Um, kind of next little set of settings here are the email templates. Um, so they kind of come pre-baked with a bunch of different templates in the system and you can jump in and customize them pretty easily here. Um, so first you will need to turn it on. The screen's going to look pretty blank with just the on and off button in the top left. Once you turn it on, we'll see all the different templates that can be customized. And up on the top right of the page with that edit template button, we can actually pop one of these open and um, go ahead and begin editing. Uh, we're not going to dig in too much of this. It basically works like any little email editor, right? You can drop in custom HTML. You can kind of type right onto that page. I do want to highlight, if, even if you don't want to come in here and do a lot of you know, in-depth customization, it's super easy to just quickly set the colors of everything to make it a little more brand specific. So maybe I want to get rid of this mint and red and kind of make it look a little more Zanata so I can change it over to a um, you know, different set of colors. Those do work with hex codes. So you should be able to get that pretty much spot on to any of your branded colors. Um, last or one little additional settings section here, kind of more for the developers in the room. Um, you can actually set up webhooks inside of Zoho Sign. Um, in essence, a webhook is just a way to send a set of data to another place. So maybe you're going to integrate this with your, uh, you know, a third party system. Maybe you want to route some of this through Zoho Flow and do some cool stuff in the CRM with it. Um, but I do just want to highlight, there's actually a really robust set of triggers that you can use for these. So you could actually be running automations when someone views a document, when one person completes it, when everybody completes it, right? Maybe if someone declines something, you want to go in and, you know, update their CRM contact and say they've declined it, right? And you can do all those with some automations built on top of these webhooks. That could be its own whole webinar. So we're not going to go too in depth on that right now, um, but just know that there's a lot of power under the hood for automating things based on different actions in your documents.